Hello everyone, welcome to this video about some very cool Django licks again. This is the second video coming right up. So yeah, the, the previous video, the first video in this series, uh, seemed to be very popular, a lot of lots of positive comments and uh, a good amount of views in the first three days. Uh, according to my statistics, the YouTube statistics, this was the most popular video or the second most popular video in the last uh, like three months. So I decided to break tradition and not do a bunch of series all at once, but stay with this series for now. And here is the second episode in which we take a look at Django stuff, you know, it could be anything, chords, uh, licks, uh, accompaniments behind the, the solo, everything. So if you haven't watched the previous episode, episode one, please do. Uh, there's a link in the description and I'm just going to continue with this same approach. So there's no uh, system, there is no systematic theme like, okay, we're going to do two five ones or we're going to do chords. It's just five things or to, today it's five that I picked out from this big PDF PDF I have with lots of stuff. And of course I'll be mentioning from which songs these licks are so you can listen to Django play them himself. As always everything is in F or B flat uh, even though the original recordings might be in another key. That is just because I like the consistency of one key or two keys, but B flat is of course very much related to F. I like the consistency uh, of that in this one document so I can connect everything easily. So let's just get started with the first phrase I have and it's a lick from what is the thing called Love, um, the 1947 recording and this is from the bridge and if you want to, by the way, if you want to download these steps you can always download them from my Patreon page. There's a link in the description and there you can download every tab I ever made uh, for every video I ever made. So this is the second four bars. So the first four bars, it's a two, five, one to B flat. And then there's this A flat seven to G seven, right? It goes like one, two, three, four. And now A flat seven. So let me play it in the original key one. So of course here it's modulated to a like we would be in the key of F. So I'll play that later. But the original key it sounds like this. So we're talking about this A flat seven to G seven. One, two, three, four, one. Three, four, one. For one. It's pretty uh, modern if you consider that it's Django. So what he's doing is he's playing A flat seven, eleven. So you get this, and just shifting that down to G seven, right? Now the funny thing is you can play this on A flat seven to G seven. But you can also play this on D7 to G7 because th that's a tritone substitute of, of uh, A flat 7 is D7 or the other way around. Now there's many more songs you can play it in. For example, uh, the bridge of Coquette has that, right? You have a 2 5 1 to G. And now you have E7, A7. Now that E7, the tritone substitute is B flat 7. And now you can play this. This lick. So let's try that. Uh, by the way, so in the PDF, it's this key. Right, this is the same fingerings. Uh, now it's D flat seven to C seven or G seven to C seven. Now let's find Coquette in my backing tracks. Uh, a link to all the backing tracks in the description, and let's play this on the bridge. So again, we have a two five one to G. Now it's E7, 
but I'm gonna think B flat seven. Yeah. A7. So here we go. Coquettes. It's a, it's a great sound, it's a great effect. So let me do another song. We can do also do it in the bridge of, for example. And I mean, there's many places. All of me also has this, right? It has D7 to G7. So then that's the same as A flat 7. But you know what? Let's do it in all of me because I have a backing track for all of me. Uh, here it is. So I will do it on the D7 to G7. I will, I will yell when it is. Here we go. Here we go. And then there, there's many other songs. There's the bridge of uh, Hans Zucker Rose. There's uh, parts of um, There Will Never Be Another You, where you have F7 to B flat 7. So it's very usable lick. But of course, it's a very peculiar sound. So I wouldn't use it all the time. Now, if you only have a, a dominant chord, so not two in a row, but it's the dominant chord on the second degree. For instance, a song like Take the A Train, where you have uh, that the, the, the dominant on the second degree is always nice with this sharp 11. So if I would just play it on D7, I have this note there. So. Right, so you can use also only the first two bars and play it on a dominant chord. You can play it on every dominant chord if, that you want, but it's especially nice if the dominant, the dominant chord is on the second degree. Um, so basically the two chord, but not as a minor seven, but as a dominant. Let's go to the second phrase, second lick. Um, ah, this is actually from Dinah, 1949. And it's the bridge. And the, the bridge of Dinah is in E minor, but here it's in G minor. Let me just first play uh, what it says here. So it says three, one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So it's in the fifth position of G minor, right? That's that's part of my system, the, the system, uh, yeah, of the Van Hamert system with the positions. If you don't know what I'm talking about, there's a link to the Van Hamert system video in the description. Check it out. So if you want to play this in E minor, which is the original key, I have to just go to the third position, uh, the fifth position of E minor, which is here, and then I play the same fingerings right here. And I have a backing track for Dinah. Um, so this is, it says uh, in, the, in the tab that's G minor, right? So in Dinah would be E minor, but of course the chords for Dinah are E minor, B7, E minor, A7. If you watch my video about Dinah, which I was, will also link, uh, I, I explain that's basically all E, all E minor. So we can play this phrase in Dinah, but we can play it in any song that has a long minor chord. But let's first play it in Dinah, so you can hear what it sounds like. Here we go. Here we 
gone. Now another song where you can play it, for example, is a song like um, "I Remember April," which is also on my in my um, on my channel as a backing track. Because there we have four bars of G, ma G major, two, three, four, and then we go to G minor. And then I can play the same thing, even though it's only G minor; it's not it's not moving the chord. So we we play it here. Um, That's exactly like the tap. So let's play it on I Remember April. Here we go. Again. Now you gotta practice a little bit on that diminished arpeggio because it has an extra note, which is also not something I do a lot, but you have this, this A, B flat. Okay, let's go to the third phrase. Another uh, minor lick from Dinah, same recording, 1949. And I played this one in the intro, I think. Yeah, I think I played that. It goes like this, one, two, three, four, one. Very peculiar lick with big intervals. It's something that uh, Django didn't do a lot. Th these really big intervals, which spans more than an octave. So he started doing it more later in his life. So this, this is, of course, of later in his recording career, which is also later in his life, of course. And uh, this recording was pretty late. So three, four, one. Um, now I play it like this, right? That's in the tab, but you could also play, of course, stay in position and start here. So then you start immediately in the first position, might, might be easier. So let's play that on um, I Remember April. Of course, you don't have to play that high, you can play it low too. But I think high probably sounds a little bit better because of the big intervals. Um, it's, more, it's more powerful to play it high. Let's, Let's stick to playing it high. Ah, one more time. And let's play it on Dinah too. So then it's in E minor, so. Or. Let's find uh, a Dinah. Here it is. By the way, that last lick um, that I don't explain in this video, but I made another video where I played that lick. The video is called Five Django Licks I Learned from Stockholm. I think something like that, but I will link it if I don't forget. I will link it to in the description. That, that's a great lick too. Okay, let's go to the next one. Ah, a very easy one to play, uh, but very useful. So this is just a lick for 
F, right? And it sounds like this. One, two. It's from the recording, The World is Waiting for Sunrise, 1949. That's the recordings he made in Rome with a piano trio and the Stefan Capelli. One more time. One, two. It's basically just a major skill up and then uh, 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 just a, you could say it's a F sus to arpeggio down, but it's just a nice phrase. So why is this so nice? Um, it's because the fingering is super easy. Why right? you have one, two, four, one, two, four, one, two, four, and then one, three, four, one fret up, and then a nice little phrase to end the, the skill, which, which makes it not feel like a skill. And it's easy to find too, because you just have to go to the fifth position of a major chord, um, the A string. So if I have to play it in D, I have to go to here. I have to play it in B flat. Now it might be worth it to also find it starting on the low E string, which is actually even easier. Let's say I have to play it in D. So I go to the fifth position of D on the low E string. Beginning's the same, and now I don't have to move a fret up, but I can stay. Let me play the one in F on uh, both ways. So this is the one that's in the tap. One, two. Now starting on low E string, one, two, three. Ah, uh, one, two. Uh. Um, let me play that. I can play that pr pretty much in any tune. Let's play it. Um, let's play it. Let's play it on Hansa Gross. Let's mix it up. Hansa Gross. So you can you can force this thing right over two five one even. So I played in the bridge. It's a two five one to B flat, and I just played the one that fits with B flat, even though I already started it on the on the on the five chord. That doesn't matter. Okay, easy and very useful. Uh, useful. And now this is a very difficult one. I thought end with a difficult one. And I use this mainly for technique, for picking technique, or, and also left hand technique. It's just a difficult phrase to play, but there is a way you can use it in a song, and I will show you that too. It's from the recording of HCQ Strut or Hot Club Hot Club Quintet Strut, 
from 1939. And originally it's in C, but here, of course, everything is in B flat or F. So this is in B flat, um, or you could say F because this would be the bridge. So the song H C Q strut goes like this: one, two, three, four. That's that weird song. And the chords you can play with these bass notes, but you can also just play A7, D7, and G. A7, D7, and then the bridge goes to C, C sharp diminished, G, and then G7, C, C sharp diminished, and then back to the A part. Now, if you, if you transpose that to B flat, then we get B flat, B diminished, F. Um, now, Django plays on that progression something really genius. Let me uh, try and play that for you. One, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> um, you see the first four bars, but this is the second four bars. So I'll play it one more time. Three, four. Ah. Now, this is a very good uh, thing to, to use as a technique exercise because of the, the difficult uh, thing with having one note per string. So. When, when I go down in uh, on the guitar or up in strings, then I have all these downstrokes, double downstrokes. And when I go uh, up, then I have lots of sweeps, but the sweeps need to be rhythmical, right? The, the, it should still be eighth notes or swinging eighth notes. Very difficult to do. So uh, let me give you a few tips from this part. So I like to have this, this shape, like a chord. Of course, Jang was playing with two fingers like this. Uh, it sounds a little bit different because now the notes are very separated. And when I do it, it's it, the note keep ringing. But I like that sound. I like the ringing sound. Now to make that happen, you have to put your fingers extremely round. So not, it's not to mute other strings. Here's the shape. Again. Again. So you get... Uh, and there again. again that's just a diminished chord so that's the first tip now for the right hand you have to be very aware of where you're going to use upstrokes and double down so for me slide down 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 up it's very um it feels natural to do two downstrokes there but then you make it yourself um, you make it more difficult for yourself so that should be an upstroke up. Up. Okay. Um, what else? Oh, that's it. So let me give you... So I use it as a technique exercise. You can use it with a metronome and do my metronome drills. But if you want to play it in a song, of course, there's not many songs that have this exact bridge, but you can use it actually on a 251. If you start... In the second bar, let me, I'm talking about mainly about the first four bars. If you start, you start in the second bar on the fourth beat. So 
one, two, three, four. This would fit on a two, five, one, and B flat. So you get, or a five, one, and B flat. So you get one, two, three, four. So this starts before the two, five, three, four. Let me demonstrate it on, uh, let's do it on coquette. So on coquette, I have a two, five in D. So I have to start, then I would start here. So we get one, one, two, three, four. And then the bridge goes to a two, five, one in G. So one, two, three, four. Let me try that on a uh, coquette. Now I've actually have never done that, <laughs> but I'm gonna try it. One, two, three. It works great actually and um, as you noticed I was playing those eighth notes pretty straight right I try not to rush those sweeps but if you are really if you really want to make it sound good you should try to swing those eighth notes which is even more difficult with sweeping let me let me try that So on this last time, I didn't even start on the four before the two by one, I started earlier. So you can always, of course, shift, be earlier, be later. I mean, this lick's, lick just works. So that would be one way to use it. Now, actually, this lick continues with the A. I didn't play it, but even though it's one thing, right? Um, if I would play the whole thing, three, four. All right, one, two, three, four. That's the last part. One, two, uh, one, three, four. That is a great little lick for F. Even though the chords say G7, C7, F is the song, right? He just thinks F over the whole thing. And you can do that. But if you do that, if you take this kind of modal approach, if you want to call it that, you got to make a very nice lines, like with motives. And he plays this kind of almost a third scale, right? Um, that kind of idea, but then just a really nice musical phrase. So you could skip the first beat actually and start on the third beat. So three, four, one, two. One, two. And um, then realize, okay, this, this phrase starts in the fourth position of a major chord. And as you know, it 
we don't have a fourth position for major chords, only three. So maybe think, okay, it starts on the major seven. Which would be the fourth position, but uh, I rarely use it. But of course, this would be it. Uh, and th this rhythm is, is very important, I think. In the beginning, try to play exactly what is written there. So one, two. So, for instance, if I have to play it in, um, let's say, D, then I have to start on the C sharp. And you can start it on the, on the third beat, but you can also start it on the first beat. I think the most important thing is to start it on the beat. So, let's say on the first beat, one, two, three, four. Uh, three, four. I played wrong. Yeah, one, two, three, four. So I have coquette here, so let me play it um, in D, and then the bridge I can play it in G. And I can pretty much play it anywhere, right? I don't have to play it on the one chord only, I can play it over this two five. So in the beginning, I'm gonna try to play it exactly like it's written, and maybe. Uh, the second chorus, I can kind of freewheel it and find some variations, mostly rhythmical. Great, uh, very nice phrase. And not, not actually that difficult to vary it and find your own little embellishments. I think that's, that is it for this week, yeah. So, again, if you wanna download these PDFs, uh, these tabs, or this tab in the PDF, it's on my Patreon, um, which you can find a link to in the description. And uh, please like this video, and share it with friends, subscribe to my channel, and if I see that this video is again doing well, I'll make a third episode. So I hope to see you there. Bye.